All right. Hello. Welcome to Is It Obvious, as we will do a proper intro to this one, unlike the last one. Lies. Phil. Lies. That was a proper intro. Bullshit. Last week. But they're never proper intros. Just is give it, up. Is it obvious? And I put in my blood, sweat, and tears for this podcast. I see no blood, nor sweat, nor tears. I'm going to go with my knife. Right. He is a talent. <laughs> you gotta keep the talent happy. Do some squats. <laughs> all right. Squats is no joke. Can we, I'm fat. I just have to sit here for two seconds and think about physical I'll just turn off my hair. I'll just okay, turn for off the my hair. It's not on. Audience. It is on. What? Our dear listeners. <laughs> How the fuck is this on? I just. And our YouTube I'm viewers. a lizard. <laughs> Hello. Zika is not fat. Okay. What, well, is it is a lizard. Sorry, is a lizard. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, I am. A lizard. Okay. My topic for today, as we can all discuss, as soon as. We stop laughing. Yep. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. My topic. Wait. Go ahead. We're good. No. no Take a deep breath. No, no, no. I can't. Allow. Exactly. Uh huh. Let it out. Just let it out. <laughs> okay, Michael. What is your topic? Ready. Not deep breath. Ready. I, I no. Nope. Give me a deep breath. We're fucking ready. I can't because I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> we're, we're not okay. For the That's all I'm asking. Micah took a really deep, good deep breath. It's not like he's stalling because he doesn't have a topic. <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking at what I wrote down for my topic and I can't read it because I have really poor handwriting. Anyway, isn't it obvious that uh, one hallmark of a societal collapse is the breaking of what everyone believes is a general norm of rules? Specifically, when it comes to rules of the road. Signaling when you're supposed to change lanes, speeding, and uh, other such activities so, are a hallmark for the outliers of societal collapse. I could see that as being a potential like indicator of how healthy a society is. Like... When people just don't give a shit about the small laws. I can see that. But it's more so in driving, where everyone is, uh, you know, driving a, what, 2,000 pound chunk of metal going 60 miles an hour that have whatever that ends up being as force. Where you're driving a very slow bullet. Mm-hmm. That not acknowledging or... Uh, Passing along information of what your intents are to the other drivers on this it's vein. fucking rude as shit. Right. But that rudeness is a greater sign that they give zero fucks about other people. Yeah. And the more you see that, the more zero fucks a city gives. Everyone makes the joke of, I'm walking here! From Urban Cowboy, Midnight Cowboy, one of those movies from the 70s. But where a pedestrian... Going onto a road was almost hit by a cabbie, and that was ad libbed. That was not scripted for that film. A mm-hmm. cabbie almost hit an actor who was being recorded in a Hollywood film, and that was his reaction. Because cabbies in New York didn't care about pedestrians, because they had to not be stopped by the next light. And the 70s was one of the darkest times of New York City. It was when drugs, prostitution, Porn theaters, Times Square was nothing but a bunch of porn theaters then. Like, societally, it was a... The antithesis of what people wanted their cities to be. And it kind of turned into this weird subculture that was not socially acceptable. But it was where they could do it. I would always... Okay, so I'm not really sure about this answer, Micah, but maybe you know. When, before... Like, the Soviet bloc started to collapse. Like, did they just have a complete meltdown in their rules and laws? And Well, was... you had the party stopped abiding by rules and laws way before the collapse of the Soviet Union. But, like, all those satellite states, did those drivers just drive recklessly? No one I mean, I mean drivers more for the American. I don't know what Eastern blocs. Sure. But if you look at... Their societal collapse definitely started from the top down because mm-hmm. power corrupts and... Absolute power corrupts, absolutely, and mm-hmm. it was just stemmed from there. Hence why you get Chernobyl, because people cared more about their party position than they cared about the safety of the civilians running the nuclear power plant. Ah, Chernobyl. Mm. The, the gift that keeps on giving. Why we don't have more nuclear power plants. Thanks, Russia. Thanks, Russia. But, what, Three Mile Island? It's not just Russia's fault. 
It's true. Yeah, Fukushima. I mean, Fukushima. Yep. Not Fukushima. just Russia's yep. fault. Yeah. No, Look, but I mean, you know. We all cooperated <laughs> in not liking nuclear, but Chernobyl was definitely <laughs> the worst of the not three, liking right? That, like, I don't know, one is a semi truck, the <laughs> other one is like a toy little car. So what was it though? I thought Fukushima actually put in more radiation into our atmosphere than Chernobyl did. Yeah, uh, but that's Japan. Who cares? Fair. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No. It's Moving like, on. Slight like joke to pre-episode conversation. Yeah. So. <laughs> God. Not true. really into the air, but into the water. But yeah, I don't know. Really, I don't, don't have enough time and to explain and that. And still leaking radiation in there, even though the ones were just held there, and they just moved all of the debris that was still there to make it look pretty. I mean, they really can't tell that radiation from other radiations, from other type of radioactive events. That wait, we don't Spring- talk about. So, wait, did Springfield take place in Fukushima, and they were just predicting it? Eventually, there'll be a fish with three eyes. Uh, there are there are fish with three eyes and human teeth. Okay, go on. <laughs> there, that actually is true. Those are fucking creepy, man. All right, sorry. I I ask about the Soviet bloc because like <laughs> this is a show different notes. show notes, people. <laughs> this is what I wanted to ask: is like society falls top down is very obviously very bad. Mm-hmm. But you're saying that society is falling what apart from the from the bottom middle up? Yeah, yeah, middle up, right? Well, it's Specifically in the fall of the American Empire, which we are all experiencing without a doubt. Well, Micah seems to think so. What we're in late stage capitalism. We cannot have unending capitalistic growth. True. There needs to be a cap on it at a certain point, but well, that is not how probably. everyone is portraying capitalism to be now. Well, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Well, I'm not gonna. Yeah. Micah's nodding like he knows what's gonna happen in the future, but I'm I'm saying here just for the record. Humans are really bad at predicting the future. Anyway, That's true. Go on. I thought Donald Trump was going to win in 2020. So I know. knew he wasn't going to win in 2020, but I knew he was, was going to win. If COVID didn't happen, happen so. he would have won. I thought he was going to win by not holding elections. That's how I thought he was going to win. No. Previous That's, podcast people, look at the show notes. Okay, Micah, go anyway, ahead. Anyway, go on. Uh, in terms of this type of class structure, uh, God, no, the Trump thing really threw me off. <laughs> in the class structure of the middle that are no longer abiding by the rules, this is an indicator, like a It, a it is signal. an indicator, but it's, it's kind of from the bottom up because you don't, well, it's middle class and up. Cause like people driving Lexuses and Beamers don't necessarily do this, <laughs> but Lies. not as much as people who buy the Corvettes. Oh, because yeah. they, they're yeah. affluent enough to afford an $80,000 vehicle. And then they... They're also narcissistic enough to not have any empathy in order... Like, they're just like, I don't give a shit about these other peasants yeah. on the yeah. road. This what is my care? road. Yeah. All I have my a 560 taxes, brake horsepower car. All of my taxes are going to basically go into paying for this road, so I should get to do whatever the fuck I want on this road. That's yes, and the taxes... The taxes that I don't pay. Yeah, I was like... And, and for, the, for the record, they don't pay fucking no. taxes. <laughs> My yeah, so thought on this is that why... $700? God, Jesus, fuck. Anyway. So it's not really the middle up. It's more like um, a trickle-down effect of people just not giving a shit about rules and laws, right? So, like, you have the people that are very well off. I would call them maybe the 1%. And... Well, do you see Jeff Bezos cutting off cars in traffic? He doesn't No, he takes drive. his helicopter. It's like, he doesn't drive. Yeah. It's not a 1% thing. It's less than 1%. It's people who want to aspire to be like that. Well, 1% for Minnesota standards is any household that makes over $250,000 a year. That's 1%. I, I don't. Look at the show notes, folks. But in this case, I know I'm right because I'm talking like this. <laughs> fair, fair. He is and, speaking with confidence. Oh, with confidence. This never anymore. happens. All right. It really Go doesn't. <laughs> but and, Phil, isn't a valid argument the fact that we only have like eight corporations in this state? So our one percent is only eight, which isn't actually one percent of our four and a half million dollar population. Four, four and a half million, four and a half million uh, population. This is a weird thing about corporations that I don't think people quite realize. So how many small businesses? that are not in any type of stock market do you think exist versus those that do? No idea. So how many companies are privately owned and how many are publicly owned? What, that have a mass... No, just... Just, what just it is. in Minnesota? Just, just in, the, in the states in general. 
the like, United States? How many in the United States? How many companies are publicly owned versus privately owned? That have a I'm well, sure there's a record, but we can't Google. That's a rule, so. But in terms of yeah. well, uh, <laughs> gross profit, that would warrant it to be on the stock market. So it's companies that could be on the stock market that aren't. All companies could possibly be on the stock market, but you're right. Like, how much money like, are they if, really bringing in, right? Yeah, but if they're not on the stock market, then they're privately owned, simply because they. Yeah, aren't. simply because they didn't want to. People who who buy stocks own a piece of that company. Right. Right. So, like, Cargill is the b- biggest company in Minnesota that's privately owned. And it's a big company. It's agriculture, and they make Truvia the sweetener, right? That doesn't have any calories. Like it's a big deal here. In I'm shocked, it's privately owned. It's privately, yeah. It's very shocking. So they're not in the stock market. Correct. Okay, so they're there. So you they're go. owned by owner. They own. The, they, they have... They're owned by a like a s- small select group of owners, and that's it. Yeah. But like the Walton family mm-hmm. owns uh, over fifty percent of Walmart, but it's publicly traded. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. God damn it. Well, we're all in it. It's fine. So one of the <laughs> weird true. things is that there are a lot of businesses out there that make decent money. I'm not talking about like billions, but probably... Well, like, enough to make a living. Enough right? to make yeah, a but living. DigiKey is a billion dollar company. I think it's privately owned. Yes. I mean, it's crazy how like Mouser and other things are really, really but, big like, companies. But like Honeywell isn't. Target isn't. No. Yeah. 3M um, isn't. Best Buy oh, isn't. Is 3M? Yeah, Best Buy isn't. 3M. 3M. Okay, so the funny things about these companies that are publicly own is that we all think that they're the big players right because they're obviously the ones in the news and we think that they're the ones that move the economy because they're so big and they're so large and they have a big market share and all that stuff but i would argue that um like it's the small privately owned businesses that are often overshadowed quite a bit that keep the economy also running true so like companies like ford or um gm or even like i like to pick on toyota a lot so i'll just say like toyota they deal with lots and lots of first second and third tier companies so basically people who give them the the leather for their nice um seats in their car right like they don't they don't source the cows right like all of these things happen and mainly those suppliers are privately owned most Hmm. of the time Mm -hmm. so like yeah okay so you can make the argument that big fish are the ones that drive all the small fish but there is something weird about america that is maybe only tied with china and germany in the sense of i think they call economic flexibility if you bomb milwaukee you're not going to shut down america because we have so many redundant companies that can reproduce those things. Mm-hmm. And you could bomb Chicago and Minneapolis. But don't really bomb them again. Yeah, don't. Don't do that. I'm just saying that if you just black hole in, in them. In terms of... If uh, they suddenly disappeared off the face of the earth. You would still have, would have enough. Well, you would no, still have it, enough. It, it falls into the idea of this is a redundancy put in because of World War II. Where you... Or well, mainly World War right. I. But well, it went into World War II where... You can't have a total war economy and have a state function. Right. Because World War I ruined every country that participated in it because they all went to I a feel total like war. that might have accelerated it, but I don't think that we... I feel like we would have still had these re- redundancy companies regardless of whether we were in a war or not. I, At, I don't know. I, I mean, do. We, I think so because you need... The, we, we love fucking competition. Yep. Is, is that's the fucking American way, um, and allegedly. everyone in well allegedly, yeah, we love competition and we love um, pitting like one brand against another. Like why? Right, but you know, if, like, oh, I'm a I'm a this fan. I'm a I'm a Coke fan. I'm a Pepsi yeah. fan. Like they, that's just marketing to capitalism. But, but, but that's what I mean. But that I, is don't, ca- I don't I don't know <laughs> if we would have had that same type of economic growth. That's what I'm saying. It's mm-hmm. it spurred it. No, it if world war if america specifically did not get involved in world war 1 at all and certainly did not get involved in world war 2 which was an inevitability after world war 1 because the treaty of versailles was just dumb but we're so big no but we were that's why we were big and we weren't touched but i'm saying like we're so big that the you, you almost will smaller businesses will pop up in regions where they that the other first like the pioneer company say can't really accommodate or isn't focusing on so like you have we'll just use cars ford motors whatever and they're they've got this section of the country 
but maybe they're not. They're maybe their focus is on this section of the country, but they're not really catering to this other part of the country. So another company comes in, General Motors, and they're like, "Well, we're going to service this part because yeah. we're going to take this piece of the pie because we can we can take this market." They're going to try to carve it off. And then suddenly there's two there's two companies with com- competing. Yeah, but I mean. Yeah, but I mean, I, okay. So it's a bad analogy, but that's what I'm saying is there's two different. Like you can have two different regions with different needs or the same needs, but do two different companies because the needs aren't being met by one. So there would be two Monsantos because there are a lot of areas in this country that can deal with agriculture. Monsanto yeah. is a fucking Cargill deal. and Monsanto are almost competitors in the seed business, right? Really, mm-hmm. Cargill is agricultural. Yeah. They're huge. Right, but like Monsanto is. Also Pro- huge. Proprietary on their seats. The yeah. only reason, yeah, I know, the only reason Monsanto we know gross. about is because they're fucking terrible yeah. company. I mean, but also then, for reasons. Because, <laughs> you know, through the transfer of evil, Cargill is also evil? I mean, everyone's evil. Everyone's, there's no, there's this, no good players here's here. Here's my <laughs> argument, though, about like, yeah, we, we're, Minnesota's basically run by six corporations. Right. I won't name them. Not in the show notes, folks. But well, it's also, maybe. we just named them. Yeah. But <laughs> if, if you listen to the last 10 minutes, we've named them. We've named but, most of them. I mean, I didn't name them. Anyway. anyway. Yeah, Target. So the issue is... Polaris. Electrolux. Okay, so we all named right. all six. All right. Um, Volkswagen. That's not Minnesota um, based. Get out of here. That's yeah. Irish based. It is, yeah. All of them are Irish based now. Sorry, You guys. know what they say in the homeland? We go with the Volkswagen. They're so innovative. Okay, here's the problem <laughs> I have. Let's try, you guys. That um, lots of first, second, and third tier (laughs) companies exist, and they make tons of money too, right? Mm -hmm. They're the they're the medium and small fish, and once you have like a functioning business, you just get paid bank. Like the best way to make a lot of money in this country is to be a business owner because you can then exploit all the wonderful juicy tax exploitations that just don't exist for the common peasant. But if you didn't have those larger corporations, you wouldn't have those same type of incentives built into our tax code because a lot of various businesses would be fighting over our legislators to give themselves specific tax breaks. This is true. Because we had large conglomerates that were forced into production of World War II. The fact that Ford, GM, and all these other companies uh, gained so much of their prosperity is because they went into a total war uh, yeah. economy, but they didn't suffer the lack of production. I mean, I, I agree with you, especially the story of the Jeep is very sad mm-hmm. because the story of the pers- the, the small team, small car company that made the Jeep, um, they, they made an outstanding vehicle. And what the Department of Defense did was said saying, you cannot possibly make this many of this vehicle we like. So give us, like not, not give us, we're taking this and we're gonna give it to your competitors. Sorry. And that's just what happens because of marching orders. Yep. So, like, Korea has the same story, too. A long time ago, there was a company called Daewoo, and they overextended themselves so much. They got into so much debt so they could keep expanding. Then they were bought by Nissan. But the problem is that they were corrupt to their core, and they weren't really producing any value. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're so big, you couldn't take them out without hurting the entire economy. Wait, no, not Daewoo. Sorry. I was thinking Dustin. The same story for um, Samsung today. There's a lot of corruption in the top ranks of Samsung, but you can't really do much to them because they're essentially untouchable because yeah. the way that the Korean economy is set up is that you have six major corporations that yeah. control them. Well, you had their son, or sorry, the son of the founder was released from prison after a huge uh, insider trading scandal or something. I'm surprised he even went to prison to begin with. Yeah. I mean, in but America, he was just, you know, the, no prison time for yeah. that. No, not at all. The one thing that I heard was like, they were surprised, or they were happy that he wasn't pardoned. They were fine with, like, whomever they interviewed for this piece sentence. was like, well, he's out of jail, but he wasn't pardoned. Yep. So. At least we jailed him? Win? Yeah, he, he, he has p- parole and can't deal with business stuff for the next, like, five years? Yeah. I mean, it's better than us, for huh? sure. But the issue I have is that, yes, we have the big fish company. They take a lot of flack. So they're the lightning rods of getting all the shit that everyone hates, right? Like, everyone doesn't like the fact that these people are the 0.1% and they're getting paid $50 million a year 
and they're basically on their second or third yacht. Or they have a yacht so big they need another yacht I'm to get sorry, their first their yacht. I'm sorry, their second or third yacht? More like their second or third house, their eighth or tenth yacht. Yeah. And they, <laughs> Wait, no, 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 no. Do you know how expensive yachts are? They're way more expensive than a house. No, 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 they aren't. Yeah, they are. Some not their houses. Not their houses. No, even their houses. Their yachts are way the fuck I more disagree. But yachts okay. are operationally expensive, too. And That's plus true. They take a shit ton yeah. of fuel. But, take shit ton of fuel, no, and they are of, hundred, they're hard to maintain. You no, have to but, pay yeah. for the rent of... Any piloting it or yeah the crew yeah Yeah. any construction firm can build a house to whatever thirty six thousand square feet that you want yeah these people have like seven million dollar homes yeah that's fine they have all over they have hundred million dollar yachts because only two firms (laughs) build those kind of yachts and they can command whatever they want because they will get you your 400 foot yacht well i can't google this because that's yeah. against the rules but i'm very curious to know if their houses are less expensive than their yachts because i would very Jeff much Bezos doubt. has a hundred million dollar yacht that has its own helipad and a backup helipad also a yacht that has to go to the yacht because yeah. it's so good okay i'm just gonna say that there I mean, is it's not quite a yacht it's just a comfort boat i'm gonna go ahead and say these people are excellent um like like they're great. They're, they're innovating the future. It's fine. They're basically like mm. the um, the paid lackey that that gets all of the hate. But a lot of the people that write our legislation, that lobby for rules that bend to their favor or is broken to their favor, the people that drive the the sports cars, not like the Lexus, but like the fancy Corvettes and the Model X Teslas here in the state, they're a hundred grand. That's not cheap, at least for me. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's it's not in, cheap. <laughs> incredibly cheap if you're a multimillionaire. Right. Yeah, yeah. Those people Pennies are not just days. six people that are just run rampant. There are even a few thousand. There are lots of people. I would say what is lots compared to like the you know US population of what 340 million? I mean just in our neck of the woods, million. which I won't tell. Uh, yeah. Edina. There <laughs> are tons of people there that drive really very expensive vehicles. Well, yeah, and you go to Plymouth, there are still Maseratis. Those are 80 plus base. Right. And so you're, I'm thinking. But there's a lot of Maseratis. The problem I'm thinking here is that, like, I love to punch. Wait, is that the middle class now? Yeah, that's. No, it's not. That's the thing that about this whole weird um, uh, sampling bias problem that I have, which is I really think that there are just tons of rich people here in this state. That live a totally different life than the rest of us goddamn peasants. Well, well, and what is rich to you? Rich is it is seven sending... figure per year? Is that rich? Seven? Jesus, that is. Seven is incredible. Per year? Rich. Yes. Yeah. Per yes. Year? But is that the baseline you're going at where a no. $100,000 car no. is. I would say. Their plaything. No, yeah, I would say if you're. The, for Minnesota, the top. To be in. Um, the I said top one percent, but really is to be in the upper middle class is two hundred fifty k a year. That's what it, it for, in Minnesota? for Minnesota. For Minnesota, the average household in Minnesota makes something like fifty to maybe even seventy seven, depending on how you count. With what what average national household. average being seventy three to ninety? Yeah, it depends on how you do the math, but I think like the household means two income earners. If you're just one person, that's different Christ. per capita, right? Yeah, but it is different. I right, so maybe. like, but let's just say household with two income earners is easily 80 in Minnesota, yeah. easily, right? Yeah. So I think top 20% is easily 250 here. 250K in uh, Biden dollars, right? <laughs> is a lot of money. You're, you're never gonna let that go. In Minnesota. It's and a it's a good chunk of money. You can easily buy wonderful homes. You can buy your eighty thousand dollar car. Maybe not as quickly as if you were to make you know four or five k a year, you know five hundred k a year. But right, but, um, four or five k, four well, or five hundred k. The with that income, the bank is allowing you that line of credit, and you are given a lot more accessibility. Yeah, but you can what still you can take save. You debt. can you depending on how you're living, and if you're making upwards of. Quarter million two, a year. Yeah, two, three, four, five hundred K. Yeah. You can if you if you're living, you know, well underneath your means for a few years, you can fucking make bank. But why would you live underneath your means for making that much money? Right. There's no point. Sometimes like, you don't want to do with deal with the bullshit, Micah. Well, bullshit. You have to find a way to not pay taxes somehow. 
So here's my argument that like if you're I hate, mowing. I hate mowing. and these are just people who work for nice companies like you're saying the the, the six that own us. Mm. <laughs> but like if you're your own account like if you own your own de- dentistry, if you're a business owner that owns their own um, machine press equipment or whatever it is, which supplies the need for all the other big fish, I I'm just sometimes wondering I played my cards completely wrong when I drive through certain neighborhoods and see their ridiculously large homes with cars that are like Model X Teslas or whatever it is, then I'm like, they played their cards right, and I didn't. Which is what it is. But the fact is that there are a lot of wealthy people here, and they're also, in my opinion, wealthy, and there's a lot of dirt, poor, fucking, just trash-tier level people. Mm -hmm. Like, not people, but just... Ink, like they're not they're, people. I'm just kidding. That's they're, they're just That's how much saying. money that they are struggling to have paycheck yeah. to paycheck. So the discrepancy between what the poor find rich and what the uh, affluent find rich is a greater barometer for societal collapse than someone in. A, Nissan with a muffler that sounds like it's grinding gears passing you on the highway not using their blinker. This is why it's such a paradox to me which I'm, I'm fine with paradoxes that's what I just live with but the people who have most to lose are those sons of bitches that are driving Maseratis right? Like they have the most to lose because they are winning this game so why would they want this society to suddenly change suddenly? They wouldn't. That's they, why they, they lobby to not have things change. They will lobby as much as they can to keep the status quo as, as hard as they can because they are simply doing a better job of playing this board game than I am. You make a great point, though. We should just have a general strike. Well, yes, we should. Every, everyone who makes less than $100,000 a year should just spend a week where like, fuck it, we're not working. Right. I mean, I, I don't advocate this because obviously, um, you know, that would be terrible. But they should. They really should. If you're not... <laughs> If you're not yes, happy no. <laughs> with the fact that the rich are just plundering no, us, I, yeah, have no, fun that's... going to an Applebee's when there's no Let's one there. Let's just call it what it is. They're fucking raping us. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, look at the McDonald's and the Burger Kings. No, it's not even that. No, they're more responsible. Look at Walmart, where Walmart deliberately underpays their employees so they can qualify for federal subsidies. But Disgusting. the rich people don't go to Walmart. They go to... London Byerly's. No, Look, but they, rich people own Walmart. Right. And yeah. rich people benefit off of Walmart's profits. Yeah, they, they trade profits, Walmart yeah. stocks. They, win, yeah. they trade Walmart. Well, because Walmart does not pay their employees, which is where they can keep their supply chain low because they're not playing their fucking workers. Yeah. I, I think that the general strike would do two things. Is that the people who would drive their cushy, super nice Land Rover here would realize that they're not getting any fucking service to the places they normally haunt. Right? Like, they already complain in the summer of 2021 that there's not enough fast food like workers you know manning the till it's like well why would there be there's it's a shit fucking job it's a a hard it's a hard job and it pays shit I had an experience earlier today going through a Burger King fast food and there was three cars in line before I got in the line but like alright this will be fine one car went ahead and it was nothing for literally ten minutes Mm mhm I drove around, no car was waiting there, there was no extra line to get their food. It was just lack of service. Yep. Because it's essentially what a it's a weird it's not a strike. It's just simply people are just not willing to put up with shit pay. Yeah. They had shit jobs before our society shut down. And then they received financial compensation from the government, which a government is supposed to do, and they realized that why the fuck would I go back to that job if they're not going to compensate for me with all the bullshit I have to put up with? But a general strike would mean not just restaurants. Fucking everything. It would be everything that's shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyone who makes less than $100,000 a year yeah. do not work for a week. Right. That, this is my argument that, like, I don't really need upper management people. Like, if they disappeared... I don't really think that the business would hurt for a week. Yeah. But I can guarantee fucking to you that if the operators were gone for a week, it would just shut down. Yep. Absolutely. So what does that mean? Quick question about uh, Google with the 
we will do no harm <laughs> as part of their no, they, mission they statement. They took that away. They did. That's no longer a thing. Don't be evil. Don't, yeah, they yeah. took that Do you know evil? Bullshit. Yeah, nice try. But... No, I think they realize that humans are just... No, gonna they do evil things. Now no have... No, if, no. if you are employed by Google and you want to stay and work remotely, we have a calculator to see how much less we will pay you Yeah. for that. Yeah. Gross. No, I... Okay, I Gross. I didn't make a comment to this before, and we're almost out of time in this podcast. But, but there's the, no time in this podcast. For the people who <laughs> kept on advocating that they want to work from home, I wanted to slap them, silly, to be like, why do you want to lose your job? And this is in my neck of the woods, in my in, in the place where I have to get a paycheck from, which I won't say the name, but it's not part of the six that we talked about earlier. <laughs> And they're like, oh, well, I can get, you know, um, like city wages and I can live up in, you know, um, St. Cloud or Savage or something, don't you know? And I'm like, <laughs> you're, a, you're a fool. Because if you think for one goddamn minute that they're not going to dock your pay because you're not ha- they don't have to pay you as much, yeah. they will guarantee to not pay you that much. They already outsource many of our functions they to overseas. They will find someone else. They will find someone else who can do the job from home for right. less. Yes, and they and they, they already will. have. Yep. We already were, are hiring people that are living in low cost centers and paying them not that wage. Mm-hmm. So why do you want to get rid of your cushy job that you have to drive fifteen minutes to get there? And people think in this magical fairy Christmas land that they're gonna get paid city wages for working out in the boonies. And I'm like, no. you're a goddamn moron. Like yeah. the company will never do that. And then Google comes out and everyone has a Pikachu face on. And I'm yeah, like, like oh. shock Pikachu <laughs> face. You should have realized that this company, that every company is fucking evil, and that they're gonna pay you the yep. least amount. The company possible. doesn't give a shit about its employees. Does not. Yeah, no, does not. absolutely not. We are fucking but hold on, replaceable Phil. cogs in the machine. If you have many people working <laughs> from home, mm. then those companies don't have to pay the outrageous leases on their high rises to give them clout, right? No, they'll, they'll they already just they already sell paid them. for that. They already paid for it, or <laughs> the infrastructure them. is already sunk in capital. And companies, as much as they would love to say they don't do sunken capital fallacy, which is like bullshit. <sighs> no, I okay. So I, the system fucking sucks. The system fucking so sucks. So the fact that I mean, people drive what, poorly better, is irrelevant but... in societal collapse. We need to look at where the money is coming from and how bad they treat well, their so, employees. That's... So, yeah, that's not a really a good indicator. Is that what we're talking about now? Yeah, no, no, no. So it clearly, it, it is obvious that the point I made was bunk because this is more There's deep-seated more, yeah. and me being in production means I do not get the whole picture of the world. No, 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 no. I think you're absolutely right, though, because there's places in Gary, Indiana, that you do not stop at a red light. You know, that's like, amazing. There are driving laws in Chicago that have aren't even suggestions. Ever, They're like, just ignored. Have you, right. ever seen, seen, no, yes. have you ever seen, like, I, those intersections in, like, other countries where, like, everyone's on, like, a fucking moped and they're just kind of going? Yeah. yeah. They're just going. There's no, oh. like, there's no traffic lights. People are just going. Yeah. Just like, I'm like see a fish. What the fuck? Yeah, there, there's this. <laughs> uh, fish. They just, there's like, just, they just know. Yeah, there's this great bizarre in uh, what the Kylo fuck? that is meant to be just a pedestrian bazaar. <laughs> And you just have a truck driving through this, like, eight-foot-wide walkway as you have shops on either side dealing business. I I do agree with you, Micah, that if you see more and more people with their shitty Nissan Maximas that need a muffler... No, 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 no. that's a four-door. They're they're going with, like, shitty Skylines. If you see more cars that are not behaving properly, I mean, like, one of the biggest arguments against socialism is drive on the Minnesota freeway for 15 minutes and realize that other people are just assholes and don't deserve any sympathy whatsoever. Agreed. That's anywhere. That's anywhere. That's not just Minnesota roads. That's That's any fucking Actually, Everywhere else is 10 minutes. Minnesota's 15. I'm going to (laughs) drive through Chicago at the end of the month. North Dakota's fucking way worse. Chicago's, yeah. No, the, no, the fucking Fargo, man. Oh, God. They don't know how to deal with construction at all. Like, Minnesota, we know how to deal with construction because it's fucking constant, right? <laughs> no, um, no, no. Where well, we <laughs> live, in the city. Okay, we're in the cities, it's constant. Yeah. You go Fargo, anywhere in the boonies? I was, okay, I gotta, like, I'm getting onto this, like, off-ramp or whatever, and this other asshole comes in on this other ramp, and he's like, I'm just gonna sit in both lanes. I'm oh, just gonna sit God, in both lanes and go 20 miles per hour. And I'm like, what the fuck? 
fuck, man. Get the fuck out of here. What? And I'm just like, he's fucking. It's like when roundabouts are introduced. So mad. I'm still mad. <laughs> Nobody knows what the fuck to do with a roundabout. Still. I... Yield. No, no, no. Hold on. In America, yield means you lose. So I, I lost my right of way. So I have to stop. Okay, like, yeah, I love right, roundabouts. Right. Ooh, I love roundabouts. I love roundabouts. There's but... like, there's a set of three roundabouts. Well, okay, I probably shouldn't even be mentioning this because Edina, China, there's but... like tons of roundabouts everywhere. Yeah, yeah exactly. there are because there Edina is be like, we're going to get ahead of this. And these, these poor people will figure it out, right? I mean, they won't Hilarious. be on our time. Are there poor people on it? Okay. There are. Yes, it's right next to St. Louis Park. They're fucking poor people. No, there are. Through they, you know what? There's, there's, <laughs> they don't are. live in Edina. They live in St. Louis Park. They, they live in... There, no, there's... No, there are... There, uh, to be, to be real here. To be real. No, to be real right now. Are very what what we think of as wealthy um, cities or suburbs of Minneapolis. Yes, there are definitely certainly wealthy areas, but there are also the shit areas. The shit areas in, every, in the wealthy areas. In the well, in the in the wealthy suburbs. Yeah. Like the same same with Chaska, Chanhassen, Eden Prairie, any of those suburbs that are down in the fucking south. Fucking savage places of dirt hole. I mean, there's certainly. Um, I don't even want to talk about there's Saint certainly. <laughs> There's, a, there's certainly hey, cities that are just streets. all trash. There's certainly cities that are all trash, but su- the suburbs that are that we think of as ooh fancy nice people in Edina, like there's still fucking trash places well, in Edina. <laughs> Sorry, I, there are. I will yield to you, Micah. I will roundabout yield to you, Micah. That the fact is, Keep when you going. see more cars just, just not like abiding by the rules. I do agree that that's an indicator that something is wrong. Mm-hmm. Like because that means that there's people, no respect for any, other your, your other your, your fellow citizens who are you're sharing the fucking road right. with, uh, and un- there's no un- respect like, for the law. Yes, and my point with focusing on driving is unlike a lot of European cities that grew out of these agricultural hubs that became trading hubs that became early metropolitan areas where so you know you go to what you do did. No, no, but in Madrid. London, a lot of the road systems are there because that's just where the horses and carriages went. Yeah, and it, there wasn't a rhyme or yeah, reason. Yeah, we, 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 we pre-planned yeah. a this lot. This is America. Of we we pre-planned a lot of shit. We pre-planned fucking. Everything. We gritted. We gritted a lot. Yeah, well, there. No, if you if you look on the East Coast, yeah, there's East some Coast fucking, is a bit wonky. Yeah, Boston there's some fucking, fucking weird ass road yeah. systems. But if you go anywhere, colonial crap. Sorry. Yeah, yeah anything post uh, Louisiana purchase. There were fucking yeah, plans. People thought about this. Yeah. Yeah, because like, you let's had these make this efficient. growing yeah. metropoli mm-hmm. yeah. that people were like, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Or Fuck that we're going to do this now because <laughs> we don't, we, we understand we're at the hub of Mississippi. We're St. Louis. Yeah. We're not going to do what New York, we're not going to do what Boston yeah. did. We're not going to do what Philadelphia did. We're going to have a grid because this is going to be a trading hub. Yep. And it's efficient and yeah. it'll And we're gonna make it better, we yep. have better infrastructure. And god I don't know how fucking Minneapolis fucked up the thirty five W ninety four merge. That's easily oh. man. Well there's a lot of things so wrong. Bad. There's it's a lot so of things bad. wrong with the, the issue too is that yeah. um I mean infrastructure is tough, but yeah. fuck. I don't really wanna ever take public transportation because I'm an asshole. Like I, I really don't. Like if I had to go and watch the Twins game, I'm driving there. And it's a lot easier to just to take our public transportation system to go to a ride and share. Yeah. But I just hate people so much. Yeah. That like I just and that's a weird sign that like if you went to I never been to Tokyo, but if you go to Seoul, like I don't really mind it. And it's not really great there either, but I don't mind taking public transport. But like But also do you have the option of private transport as uh, much as you when you're in Seoul as you are here? Private transport probably not. Like when my uncle would pick me up, it's in his But well, you're not renting a car and No, Korea. no, God no, no, I would die. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not exaggerating, different. I right. would probably get into an accident. No, no, yeah. but it's it's a matter of oh my gosh, shit, I'm on the other side of the road. Right, <laughs> yeah. But like would you expect uh <laughs> Your family members that would True. visit from Korea to rent a car here. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. They would just rent a car. They would just rent fun. a car here. Oh. Okay. But I would not rent a car there. I would not survive. Okay. And I think the reason why is because I I, I don't drive in Chicago. Like, I always have a coworker that comes with me, and I always make that person drive me because I'm an asshole. But also because I'm really bad at driving. But also because I really don't like driving, and... But I would rather take driving to your point, Micah, than any public transport because public transport is just... I just don't like people in the public transport See, or I just kind really of... I don't really mind public transport. I, I, I own a car. Well, it's fine, yeah. but 
this is America and we don't do public we, transport well. We do not do it as Like, LA is real close at doing public transport well and it's still fucking awful. Yeah. But the people, too, are not... They, yeah, like, they're Like, they're kind of animalistic. Like, in the best way I can describe it, without <laughs> sounding like an asshole or racist or misogynistic, is this. You haven't been on a New York subway unless you've seen a dude jacking off in a corner? Gross. All right. Okay. The fact that they have headphones, but they don't use it, <laughs> and that they're going to play the shitty music, is animalistic. <laughs> no one wants to, no one right, wants no, to listen to your music. Just I don't even care. Thinking. I, I don't even care that. if I like the it's, song. Right. I, no, shut up. What put the your headphones going on here? If you are on speakerphone... In public. Get out of here. Put your You phone. do not deserve to have a cell phone. Agreed. When I, w- when I was in... No one wants to oh hear your fucking God. conversation. When I was in Munich once, oh, so bad. they would shame people and then there is a special card that you go to if you're going to be an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> oh, right? that's so great. Uh, and that was nice. Yeah, and the Germany's thing country. is, <laughs> with that public transportation system, all the way from Germany to um, through France... Through Belgium to uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam's a country. God damn it. It's a city, but I always think of them as a country because it's so whatever. It's its Denmark. own thing. It's a thing. Anyway. It was a wonderful experience. But that does not translate very well to my experience in Minnesota. It's like, why are you not using headphones, you son of a bitch? You have them around your neck. But no, you're going to play your crappy YouTube thing right in front of your face. And everyone else gets to enjoy Enjoy this yeah. TikTok. Quotes. Like I hey, well, hold on. Yeah, it's almost. I, I can almost skip the ad. I just yeah. It'll, Five get, it'll get better after. Oh no, this is one of the thirty second ones. Oh, this is the one that's the mandatory. You have to listen. God dang it. The, yeah, but, oh, hold on. It's gonna be. Wait, was there another one? Oh, oh, it's, a two, it's a two ad it's one. Just the, oh, I hate those. It's the complete YouTube. lack of like <laughs> respect for other human beings. It is. Yeah. And, like, yeah, you do that on the road going 70 miles an hour, that's not fun. But going 10 miles an hour on a city bus and you're, like, actually having to... I, I agree that it is, a, it is a quality signal that there's something wrong with the quality of the people here. And, yes. Am I going to talk about when I was almost ran off the road? Because I'm still fucking salty We've, we've like all it? almost been run off the road at one point. Well, I don't know about you, Phil, but I have also almost... Well, you were chased. Road. That was a oh, that was a different thing. That was that, that was, was a different thing. Yeah, I've also been almost run off the road. There was. <laughs> Did you have just like a car merging? Yeah, it was, like a, it was totally a it was a it was a it was a fucking truck that was merging. Oh god, that's. I had the fucking was... lane. I it was my fucking lane. Mm. He was supposed to merge in, and he's like, "Nope, don't care." And I'm like, "Buddy, dude, why?" Such an asshole. And then he like did this like waving at me like, "Ha ha, fuck you." And I'm like, "What the fuck?" That, that's Nearly where, ran me off the road. Just, yeah, that, that, that's, 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 yeah. That, that's where, that's the reason why you keep like a two inch jawbreaker in your car. <laughs> they can get for about a dollar at any candy store. Throw it at them. God. And you just, you get in front of them Suck slightly it. and you just roll in your window and go, achoo! Because a jawbreaker will break any fucking window on a car. If they're driving 60 miles an no, hour. No, we don't advocate for violence. <laughs> Let's, we don't advocate for vandalizing other I, vehicles But I almost either. ran off the road. I have a little knife in my car that has a window breaker on it. And I was just like... Don't this? throw things at other cars. But you know have to know, statistically yeah. speaking, there's karma. It's okay. I believe in <laughs> Minnesota karma when it comes to driving. Because I've seen it happen too many times where people drive in the wintertime like Oh, asshole. yes, that is and Minnesota you see them in the and then <laughs> It only like, happens in winter, though. It, it only happens, happens in winter. It only happens but in it... winter, and you cannot wait for like a Muppets. There's a time driving through Wisconsin, which similar thing. It's Minnesota, worse. Uh, <laughs> that's true. Madison's nice. <laughs> Madison is nice, because that's Minneapolis, but worse. Yeah. No. Madison. Okay, sorry. No, Madison's not better than Minneapolis. It's more fun than Madison. Madison's more fun than Minneapolis, but it's not better than Minneapolis. Yeah. It's, it's what Minneapolis wants to be as a college town, but Madison like can do it, but Madison also doesn't have like the Minneapolis club. Yeah, Minneapolis is a, ni- a pretty nice city. Oh, it's not bad. It's not Downtown bad. Downtown kind of sucks. It's okay. Saturday nights are bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. Anyway, yeah. driving, <laughs> driving through, and I was driving with my brother, and we're at this tail end of the snowstorm. And just, we get all just the tail end of the shit. And we're going as confident winter drivers growing up in the boonies where... 30 to 40 miles an hour? Maybe 45? No, no, no. no. Oh, we're going 50. 55, yeah. 60. Okay. Well, yeah. it depends on where you're going. But you're confident. Yeah, you we're, know. Confident. we're not yeah. going 80. Like, yeah. driving through Wisconsin, we're fucking going 80. Well, and it also depends, like, 
have the plows been through what you know how much other cars are on the road and what road you're on yeah major highway Okay, a major highway might be okay. Yeah, so like, we're not driving yeah. in county roads. I'm not going on county And it's county tail end of a storm, so the plow has probably been through at least once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we're <laughs> following At least this. once. Yeah, so we're getting, like, the second snow. <laughs> yeah. So it's cautious driving, because mm-hmm. it's, like, fucking 70 Wisconsin anyway. We're going 50. Okay. And it's uh, suburban with a U-Haul trailer flies by us. Oh, no. Oh, no. And we're just like... I'll see you in a oh, bit. Oh, no. <laughs> They're going to crash. Yeah. Gonna How crash. much you right, want to so bet we're going to see them here. in about yeah. five, ten miles? Yeah. No, we're, we're going to exit here, get some gas, swap seats, you oh, know, God. for the next like two, three hours till we get to Chicago. Whoop, back on the highway, the next on <laughs> ramp. Oh, God. Flipped over. Right. Yep. And was like, mm. I hope no one was hurt, but you yes. fucking deserved it. I yeah. mean, yeah, like hopefully no <sighs> one's I have hurt, but yeah, I fucking don't... A, man, you deserve it. Okay, I, I drove this thing cloud a lot for a lot of reasons I won't talk about, but I do believe in Minnesota karma, at least when it comes to wintertime, the shitty drivers get their comeuppance. Oh, yeah. Because there is a lot of oh, room for error in the nice construction Minnesota summertime, yeah. but there is very little room for error when it comes to physics yeah. and Minnesota winters. And mm. ice. And ice. But our winters have been becoming very tame lately. That yeah. makes me kind of sad. It's so we're, getting s- yeah. s- we're getting spoiled, man. We are. Yeah. We need, it needs to be colder. Mm-hmm. Did have one fair run experience. Snowier. Mm-hmm. As a Minnesotan touting their Minnesota may- mayhap driving in winter. Mm-hmm. But driving from my boonie town to the boonie metropolis of 15,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> driving on a road... And I was driving my front wheel drive vehicle after a slight slushy morning. Buddy's on his phone with his brother. Drive along. Going, going, going. Uh huh. 90 to the left. Oh no. 180 to the right. Oh my god. Swerve, swerve, swerve. Fine. Yep. Wow. Buddy didn't break timbre talking yep. on his phone. And I'm just like, we'll be alright, we'll be alright. <laughs> yeah. I'm just the. the Two uh, girly this. Brits got from this. Family Guy just up, 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 up. <laughs> like, ooh, 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 yeah, got it. There's a lot of miming going on. Mike is like waving his hands. Imagine around. a steering wheel, 90, 180, back to <laughs> back on the road, no problems. Yep, no problems. Oh. Didn't even and, cross a lane, really. And can, yeah, <laughs> it, it was just in the lane, swishy, swishy. Just it was a windshield <laughs> wiper across the road. Yep. And this happens. This does happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just and, occasionally. You just got to know how to drive it, when you're fucking... It was... Panic yeah. The tires and, start yeah. swooshing around. Panic, controlling the steering, but not applying the brake, because I did not want a hydroplane on this, or else we would have been in the ditch. Yeah, yeah. right. But did not apply uh, gas, which might have balanced us quicker, or might have driven us into the ditch. Yeah. If you, you, gotta, slow, you gotta let it go. Down, it's like slowing, driving a boat. Yeah, you gotta kind of just deal with the water. Yep, take off the, take off the acceleration at least. But, That'll at least get you. Buddy? Uh, yeah, yeah, alright. I'll talk to you later. Don't you ever fucking do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and my first response was, not drive into the ditch? Yeah. yeah like, fuck you. I kept my yeah. fucking car on the road. Get out of here. That's why that's I like Minnesota, Minnesota so much. It's because yeah. the people who are virtuous... Do survive on the roads. The people who are incompetent do not, and the people who are assholes certainly get flipped over. At least so, in winter time. At least in winter time. At least in winter time. It's, it's, it's the one the, karma. So it's the, it's the great equal. From taking out the great equalizer. It's the great equalizer yeah. of the great, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Fuck you, traffic and assholes. And also, it's like shows people who are responsible. They get snow time. You know, it just, it's just well, so wonderful. Winter, about this. You know, this is the reason tires. we live in Minnesota is because winter. It's winter. not because it's not because we have those two perfect. No, it's not because we have those two perfect fucking weeks of the year. It's because that, of that, winter. That those result. are really nice. The reason is winter because we stick around for winter because people like come together over winter shit. Assholes get their comeuppance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Assholes get their comeuppance. People get out of their cars to help shovel people yes. out of the ditch. Yes. A, a communal or, survival. Yep, yeah. it is. It is. Because sometimes you just you, fucking need help. You are a good Minnesotan when you have pushed out another car mm-hmm. before the road was plowed so they didn't get ticketed. Yep. yep. That's a good Minnesotan. That yeah. is. We all have to survive together. Yep. Yep, we if it wasn't for winter, we'd just be animals. If you can't oh, get yeah. up your driveway and your neighbor comes over and be like, "Hey, you need some help shoveling yourself up so you can get your your, yeah. your car." No, that your happens garage. several yeah. times. Oh, they're here, they're oh, they're like my shovel. This yeah. is like this is an old lady, right? Who's like freaking 
50, 60 years old. And she's like, oh, do you need me to come help you out there? And you're like, oh, I like how Jesus. 50 and 60 is old. But as <laughs> I approach really 50 and 60, <laughs> it is old. Yeah. I feel well, I mean, you bones. know, you're just this like rickety old lady and you're just like, oh, do you need some help there? And you're like, oh, you're so adorable. I don't want to ask you for help, but. Yes. I appreciate the offer. They're super nice. <laughs> so our winters need to come back. Our winter is so mild that more people Well, are... don't you worry. After well, yeah. this global warming, we're going to go into a yeah, nuclear no, we're, winter we're, and it's, it's just going to be, be this... snowpiercer. Yeah. We're well, just going to be... That, that's the crack back from this. Is It's going to be super hot. And then somebody's going to be like, let's see the clouds. And then it'll just be snowpiercer. Yeah. I mean, we could do that. Ace Age. Oh, Minnesota will be fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll be all right. right. Just already the rest, rest of the country will be fine. The rest Probably of the country the might take a, uh, yeah. maybe like a few months to get yeah. used to it. and then we'll... We have to survive on this train. And then oh, everyone... yeah, you got a nice pretty train there. We'll see you when you come back next year, okay? All right, bye-bye. And then everyone will be speaking like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also... Oh, yeah, hey there. Did you see? We got some uh, good elk coming down there, you know. Oh, the moose are coming back, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really great. I mean, we still have to call some Don't of the you know. wolves, but let me tell you, <laughs> they are doing their work. <laughs> oh, oofta. Oofta. Oh, let me just uh, squeeze by you there. Okay. Oh, but just you just wait. You just just you just being just being a darling right there. Do oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, come here, Mark. Come here, Stephanie. You see this train here? That's the last bit of the people that grew south of Forty Six Parallel. Anyway, <laughs> first of all, Minnesota accent is charming. So it is. screw it's anyone who doesn't adorable. think that. And also, um, I completely ag- let the record know I completely agree with Mike on the premise. Road etiquette is definitely a quality signal about things to come. Uh, so. I, I oh, think damn, that that's was... a way better way of work. Why did I pose it so dumb? Because you're wordy as fuck. It's fine, though. Don't worry about it. We got it. We got, we got it. it. similitude. Get out of here with your fucking words. <laughs> also, I'd like to thank my mom for teaching me how to drive in the wintertime, which was good I luck, would son. Good like luck. I'd like to thank my father, I guess. I would like to thank uh, my brother's girlfriend's mm-hmm. dad who gave me the license even though I totally failed the driving test. And you're still a pretty damn good driver. Yeah, really good. So what does that say about driving? Damn good. It's really easy? I know, it is really easy. It's stupid fucking easy. I don't know why people have trouble driving the I car. know, it blows it my mind. Me. It blows my mind. I, I, I can explain that, but it's a different episode. Bye, right. Mom. Bye, Mom. Thanks, Mom.